I'm George Reister. He's Ralph Amsden, and this is the Pac-12 Apostles. Uh, we had another great week of college football, another great week of games. The Pac-12 actually had some really big games. There are playoff implications and everything else, and that's where we will start. Ralph, does the Pac-12 have a path to the playoff? That's a tough question. It's a tough question because right now, Oregon is the top ranked one loss team in the country outside of one team, Alabama. Right. And they're not going to pass Alabama. Unless right? Georgia beats Alabama in the, uh, in the sec championship. Right. But all things being equal, if they both stay with one loss, then it's not going to happen. Oh, that means right? Georgia and Alabama are getting back in the playoff. <laughs> if yeah. so, like if Alabama runs the rest of the table, and then yes. Georgia wins every game until they get to the pack to the SEC championship. One of those two teams is going to. I mean, sorry, both of those teams are going to the playoff. That's just going to be what it what it's going to be, unless like I don't even know if Clemson actually Clemson going undefeated won't even be able to matter in that in that case because Clemson they don't look that good. Right, right, right now they, they don't. Like yeah, and I got to see Notre them in Dame person teams. this weekend. Yeah, I got to see them in person this weekend. They've had a decently tough schedule, and they've hung on in a lot of games. But eventually, you play Russian roulette, you get shot. Yep, you played enough times, and that that's that's kind of where they're at right now. Um, the the weird thing about the the way that it's set up right now is there's a path for three SEC teams to get into the college football playoff. All yeah. it's going to take is for Tennessee to beat Georgia and then not lose. I guess, well, no, no. I no, guess if Georgia then that if, would have if, whoever wins the West is going right. to have so, lost in the SEC championship and have a second loss. So no, right. So what not. it would mean. So then let me, let me rethink it. It would be Georgia beating Tennessee and Alabama beating, beating Georgia. Georgia. Yes. Yes. That would be the nightmare scenario for yeah um, because because even e even like me being an advocate for other conferences I wouldn't know how to argue three teams in the SEC out of the college football playoff in that specific situation yeah because Georgia would have that win over Oregon and Oregon would be right there uh, Clemson um, you know if they don't lose then they are going to stay ahead of Oregon but they also might not get in. Yeah. Hey, hey, do you know what is crazy about that? So I don't think that Clemson is going to be able to walk through the raindrops, but I mean, we saw Notre Dame do it a long time ago when they ended up yeah. in the national championship, when everybody was like, Oregon's better that, that year. But yeah. it's crazy how scheduling matters, right? Mm -hmm. So Michigan play Colorado state, Hawaii and Yukon in the non-conference. And you're probably wondering, okay, what does that have to do with the Pac-12? Because Michigan canceled UCLA in 2022 and in 2023. So yeah. that's how it matters. So now imagine if Michigan had to have played UCLA instead of Hawaii and then next year with ECU. So their non-conference schedule is terrible next year too so yeah. now imagine if they had to play ucla which could be a loss right or yes. even if they play georgia and then oregon switches that hawaii game out that georgia game for hawaii georgia that that makes oregon undefeated and in the top because of where they came in in the season they're probably ahead of michigan at this point Right. So you're incentivizing weak scheduling, which I'm I'm not a fan of, which I, I think unless Michigan beats Ohio State would be something that I would consider uh, if you're looking at a one loss Oregon versus um, a one loss Michigan. Yes. Like, I think that you would give that. But there's other issues with this. There's the possibility that Clemson could run the table. I don't think they will. 
There's the possibility that TCU could run the table. They look fantastic, but they don't play defense. Yep. So it's it's possible that with the because their schedule still has they got to play at West Virginia, who's not very good, but it's still you have to go to Morgantown. Uh, I think they have to play at Texas. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think the honest, Texas the, Tech game might be on the, the road big, too. Yeah, and the Big Ten is not that good this year. Outside of Michigan and Ohio State, they got nothing. And, and but if Michigan say, and Ohio Illinois State, is ranked, Illinois hasn't played anybody. Yeah, I Illinois is legit on one side of the ball, like very legit. Like I would trade any defense in the Pac-12 for Illinois' defense. No, but oh, absolutely. Are you Abs- kidding? Me? Absolutely. No, not watch a, them. Watch dude, them. Have you seen? Watch them. I've watched them, bro. There's not a chance, bro. There's not a chance. First thing is. This is a team. Yes, they held Iowa to six points. Everybody holds Iowa to six points. Um, They beat Minnesota. Wisconsin is awful this year. Awful. Um, And they lost to Indiana, bro. No, absolutely not. That has nothing to do with that. That has nothing to do with their defense. Their their, their defense is cool, but they haven't played any good offenses either. They've not they're, played uh, one they're legit They're also offense. making these offenses look worse. There is one team in college football, George, that is giving up less than four yards of play. One. There is one. There are two teams. Two teams in all of college football that have given up less than nine offensive touchdowns. One of them is Georgia. One of them is Illinois. They've both only given up five touchdowns. Illinois is 20 yards ahead of the next team in team yards per game. Like they are very, very good on one uh, side. Of yes, the ball. they are. I'm not doubting. But I'm that not, they're I'm, good I'm not, on I'm not defense. arguing with you that the big Ten's not. Yes. You do. You literally, that is literally the argument that you no, just made. No, you said, no, you said say- they're not good and they haven't played anybody. I'm and saying I, my whole that point their is, defense is good, but it is not I would what trade, you're making it out to be. I would trade their defense in a heartbeat for any PAC 12 defense. If you put, this Illinois defense, the 2022 Illinois defense on on uh, UCLA or Oregon, that's a national championship contender. Oh, period. God. It's the truth. It's the truth. They Watch don't have the athletes, play. bro, to keep up with it. when they when if, if, if they make it to the to the Big Ten championship against Ohio State, they're going to lose by a million. Because football's played on two sides of the ball. No, no, no. I'm saying they're going to get 50 points scored on them. No, they're not. Okay. All right. Anyway. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This defense is so good. I would trade every – I would trade – nah, I wouldn't say I would trade like an all-pac-12 defense for the Illinois defense. Oh, my God. Dude, Oregon, are you drinking this Oregon morning? Oregon and UCLA. Are you drinking? Oregon and, Oregon and UCLA, I would drop in a heartbeat for Illinois' defense. Oh, my God. Are you Are you drinking right now? No, it's that. Uh, are statistically, you, are you a high? So what you're saying is the statistical by far record number defense in the NCAA isn't better than Oregon who didn't force UCLA to punt. Uh, that's actually a miss. I mean, they also got a turnover on downs as well. So, like that, that that's actually better than a punt. But whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Well, UCLA almost scored as many touchdowns in that game. They definitely had as many scoring drives in that game as Illinois has given up touchdowns all season. This isn't dude, a Big Ten podcast. If they I'm telling you, I got to see Illinois team, up close. If they play a good offensive team, they are going to get. And that smacked team will look mouth. worse than they usually do because Illinois' defense, statistically is the best in all of college football this year. Do, do and I've gotten Iowa's the opportunity defense to watch them twice. So, so, so Iowa's defense is really good, right? Yeah. They got not even 50 points hung on them this week. They turned the ball over on the first two drives, Iowa did. I'm, I'm just saying they got 50 points. Well, sorry, their, their, their defense got 36 points hung on them this week. Right. How your offense runs is part of how your defense plays. Correct. Illinois' offense sucks, and they're still giving up 3.78 yards per play. Okay. All right. That's so better. Play, you, play you somebody know, with a pulse, and, 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 that will, and that will change. So, can you tell me the top Pac-12 team in yards per play? 
I would say, ooh, that's a that's a good question. I am going to go with I'm gonna go with Cal probably. It's Utah at tied for 37th at 5.9 yards per play. Yeah. Yeah, because they actually play play people who can score. The Pac-12 has some of the best offenses in the country this and if season. You gave, and if you gave Utah Illinois' defense this year, they would be very, very good. They would have beat Florida. They would have handled USC. And they probably would have beat UCLA. Okay. Okay, so so now you're caping for a bunch of three star guys that are gonna beat the five star guys at at other schools. No, Sorry. I'm caping. No, no, I'm caping for the fact that I've watched this team play, and the statistics say that they're number one. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. like every, literally every fact is on my side. There's not a single thing that you could say besides uh, no, and no is not an argument. Okay, like, okay. what is what what is the best offense that they that they've played? Who is it? Minnesota? M- Minnesota who was like number 1 in the in the Big 10 up until last week? Okay. In your in yardage I, in, a, in a conference that includes Ohio State? I'm just I'm just I'm just asking. Is 221 defensive yards per game is otherworldly. Yeah, it's, it's otherworldly. It's not. It's not quite as otherworldly when you're playing against teams that can't score. But th- th- that that's a whole. You other still got to do what you do. <clears throat> okay. You still got to do what you do. Nobody. I'm not going to shit on Oregon's offense because no one in the Pac-12 plays defense, but Utah, and Utah's not barely in the How top. How you going to say that UCLA doesn't play defense? I know you watched their game against. All right. All right. Okay, so now let's <laughs> so now UCLA's UCLA's not even in the top fifty in yards. Yep. Yards yards don't equal points, my friend. Yards do not okay. equal points. Okay. Okay. You you have officially turned into Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the games this week. Actually, um so the games this week. Now, I, actually, how would you judge this last week of of, of Pac-12 games? You know why I, you know why I went hard for Illinois, right? Because uh, they probably have somebody for Arizona on there. They do not. Who is their week one opponent? Wyoming, and they trounced right. Wyoming. And I, I've spent that whole game like sitting on my living room floor with my head in my hands. And so I had to watch them against Indiana and I had to watch them against another team. I was like, is, are, is Wyoming this bad or is Illinois this good? So I've been watching Illinois every no, week. No, no, just no I'm not saying that Illinois does not have a good defense. They don't have a defense that can, what that can, that can hold up against good teams is what is what the point I'm making is. All right. I'm saying their defense is better than the 12 pack 12 defenses. And it's by a lot. Okay. So this week in the pack 12, uh, with, with teams who can actually score points, actually some of some of them. <laughs> How would you judge this week in the Pac-12, where, uh, yeah, where there was five, four games? Uh, the one thing that stands out above anything else that I watch uh, this week is that um, I don't think UCLA did very many things wrong against Oregon, and it didn't matter. That was an education for me because I thought that. If you if you had just read me the statistics of what UCLA was able to do offensively against Oregon, I would have told you that at a minimum, at a minimum, they dropped 40 and the game was close. But the game was not close. Um, it was an 18-point deficit at halftime. I didn't think UCLA was out of position on defense. I thought they tackled well. Yeah, I they, they, they didn't w- even do anything terrible. They just got yeah. run over. I thought that um, they got Dorian Thompson Robinson off schedule, but he mm-hmm. still looked good. Yep. And I thought that Zach Charbonnet cemented his position as probably, I mean, head and shoulders, the best running back in the conference. And none of it mattered. They got their asses beat. And it, it just, it, Oregon is that team. And I, it took this long to figure it out. Um, I was trying to I, tell that, everybody. 
Well, you're always trying to tell everybody. No, I'm not trying to tell everybody. No, dude. I, I They'll go five and seven. They'll go five and seven, and you'll be like, well, I'll point to these seven plays. When, and that when, been 12, when, no. Point, find me a five and seven Oregon uh, r- record that, that wasn't Mark, <laughs> Mark Helfrich's last, last year. I challenge you to find me a five and seven record, buddy. Challenge and you. I, and I'm telling you that if we went back and we went through that Mark Helfrich's last year, you would tell me that it came down to like 10 to 12 no, plays. No, I didn't. I, I would, I would tell you we needed a new head coach. That's what I would tell you. <laughs> um, so, but, so we'll, we'll start with that UCLA Oregon game. So you had um, Dorian Thompson Robinson throw for 262, two touchdowns and a pick. The only thing about his play in particular was, there were two other balls that could have been picked. Yeah. Or sh- could have, should have been picked, like in the defender's hands, but the offensive guy broke it up. <laughs> like that's, yeah. it was one in the end zone. And so, and so while Oregon's offense gave, gave up 30 points, right? They forced field goals. Like UCLA is yeah. a really good offense. And sometimes mm-hmm. that's the best that you can hope for. Like you're yeah. not gonna get three and outs and all that stuff. Like in the Oregon Georgia game, Oregon had like 25 first downs in that game. I mean, people, the it, it the the score didn't reflect how the game actually went because it was those two picks in the red zone, or n- they they were near the red zone because uh, they well they were both intercepted in the red zone, but um. Right. But that Oregon was moving the ball, getting first first downs, and then they yeah. would, and they had so many penalties in that game. Like they just didn't play well. It was Dan Lanning's first game, new head coach across the country, new quarterback. They're trying to gain trust, believe in the system, all of this stuff. And was Georgia the, and Georgia just came off a national championship, well oiled machine, all of that stuff. And it was basically a home game for Georgia. They, yeah, they, it would have been like playing in Portland. Yeah, yeah, it was it 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 snowballed early, and the team has looked like that was the best possible outcome for this team. I think, aside from aside from winning. Yeah, no, I think sometimes well, because you look at um, there's a Montana State, they got wrecked by uh, Oregon State, right? Yep. Um, I don't think they've lost since. Like you, it so I'm not. It really helps to get out there and find out what exactly it takes to be uh, at that level. I still didn't think that like my eyes were deceiving me. I still didn't have them. There was a couple of weeks where I'd had them as the number one team in the Pac-12. But the more that I watched UCLA, and the funny thing is UCLA again. I want to stress. I I don't feel like they did very much wrong yeah. in this game. And I've heard other people say like, well, there's a big momentum switch of Oregon having that onside kick. It didn't matter. It was no. never going to matter. No. It was ne- it. I, I like. I appreciate that perspective and people who think of it in, in those terms. But this was from the first play of the second quarter through the end of the game. It was a route. Yeah, and 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 I would say, in UCLA's defense as well, this was their first real road game, because because the Colorado game. Right. Does not count. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this was their first time playing in any noise at all. Any noise. And Oregon is a hostile environment. Hostile. Yeah. It is. And, and Josh Josh Pate, the, the dude who always stays in the South, late kick, he was out there for the first time. And I was talking to him. He was like, I did not expect it to be like this. He said, if you close your eyes when you're there, you wouldn't know whether you were at in front, even though it was only 60,000 people there, you couldn't tell the difference between being in Death Valley at LSU or being in uh, Brian Denny Stadium in a big – he was like, you can't tell the difference if you close your eyes. And honestly, there's – there I, I, I kind of put Autzen off by itself a little bit, um, but – there are five environments in the Pac-12 that when they really get going are like that. And you could you could make an argument that Okay, so who are it, those five? I would say Utah, Washington, yeah. yes. Oregon. Yeah. Um where else? Corvallis will give it to oh, you. Oh yes, and, yes. Oregon and, uh, State will get that to you, bro. And 
and the years when uh Washington when State Leach, is good. Yep, and yep. the year, yep. Yeah, that's tough. Yep. And and if we did, ever did you notice if we who we ever didn't find mention. out the LA schools. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it, oh, all of the California schools. Uh which oh, is funny because not Oh, and if Colorado Fresno, Fresno ever got good like, again. Yeah, if Colorado ever got good again, but there's uh, they made what one they've had one winning record in like the last twenty years, so it's t- it's amazing that their fans still show up. But uh, the a- ASU Notre Dame, uh, when when they came to visit, like ASU's shown it can happen, but it, unless you're winning, they're not going to come out, and that's that's not necessarily the case. Like in Corvallis, yeah, they had like eight three win seasons in a row, and it's still a brutal place to go and play a. A football game but i i would say that i would say that maybe washington state's on the outside looking in of that five but utah i've been on the sidelines late in a in, in a tight game in utah and i felt like i was in absolute hell um i could i don't understand how the players could and then it'd be like cold and windy uh and washington is the i mean washington you get into November and that place is a nightmare. Austin is always there. There were a couple of years there uh, with Helfrich and early on in Justin Herbert's career that the fans weren't coming out, um, but they've been back and, and it's been yep. rocking ever since. And Corvallis has half the capacity right now and players are still coming out of there saying like, Oh my God, that's a terrible place to to try to play a football <laughs> so, game. So, so when that, when that stadium is finished, see yeah. if I were building stadiums, right. I yeah. would build a, and I know that you want it to be aesthetically pleasing and all that stuff. No, I'm caring about the acoustics more than anything else. Probably, yeah. Acoustics number one. I want yes. this place. If if even if it's twenty thousand people in it, I want it to sound like a jet engine. Yeah, and I, so I just went to uh, two games in one day. I went to uh, Clemson, Syracuse, two top fifteen undefeated teams. Noon kickoff, no alcohol allowed in the stadium. Felt like a golf tournament. Clemson didn't get loud till 11 minutes and 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter when they took their first lead. So, uh, and they then, were front and then, <laughs> yeah, and then South Carolina, the exact opposite. Like these people had drank for 12 straight hours. The state fair was going on right outside the stadium at the exact same time. They were, uh, the Aggies were there, but everybody was in the same color. They were loud for no reason. Uh, the opening kickoff got returned for a touchdown. And you know that that's the biggest thing that could set a stadium off. Yes. Is, you know, people still getting into their seats and, and and that happens. And that place was just a party. And even then, like, I was like, oh, this isn't any different than than a game at Austin or, or, or going to Seattle in November. Like, it's loud and cold and ugh. like, it, you know, I I would put I would put a couple of those Pac-12 schools. Now there's some that are just. And we'll get into the Stanford stuff, but like there's some that are uh, a joke. There's some that you could just take the stadium out and play in a park, but uh, there are some very good environments. It's cool of, of Josh Pate to, to, um, to give the, the Pac-12 some love that way. All right. So back to the game, <clears throat> Oregon 45, UCLA 30. This was a game to where, uh, and, and where I thought Dorian Thompson Robinson was good, but but remember, I said Oregon has to keep him from getting hot, and that's what they did. He was not able to get to get hot. They they disturbed him, and then in the second half, he missed some throws that he should have made too. He was not the version of himself that we talk about on this show. Yes, the, For, like he he was pissed off. He was he was just mad. If, if you and it's very strange that like they kind of go as his mood goes, um, but he was rattled. Yeah. And that they, they, they're not the same team when he's rattled, even though they still look pretty good. Yeah. Um, and Zach Charbonnet, bro. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I So, like, I did not discover anything new about Zach Charbonnet this game. Nothing. Everything I thought about him is everything I thought about him. Because, out, because ever since that Georgia game, Oregon tacklers have been powerful. Like, like when they hit people, yeah. people stop. Like the play's over. And Zach Charbonnet, it ain't like that, bro. Now, granted, UCLA and Chip have a good running system, a scheme. They're off as a line. They got basically all seniors there. But Zach Charbonnet, you give him that ball, and it's like fourth and one. He ain't getting stopped, bro. <laughs> he ain't getting no. stopped. And it was down down three touchdowns. They didn't get away from a commitment to the running game. And that's the 
the the the messages we were getting about you know shitting on Cal and 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 other teams that got away from the run, I'm just like want to point at that like UCLA is down three touchdowns, moving the ball, you know, giving their quarterback yeah. a break, not putting your everything point is on his move shoulder. the ball. Like it's not yes. move the ball because if you can pick up eight yards in a running play, that is just as good as a pass play. Or just let your defense stay on the sideline and get coached for a minute instead of getting out on the field, getting torched by Bo Nix. All right. So, um, oh, and then on the Oregon side, Bo Nix was 22 of 28, five touchdowns. He Mm. escaped the pocket very well. Eight carries for 51. I mean, he, I, I, I can't. Everything I said about Bo Nix for four years is the complete opposite right now. Yeah. I mean, I, get, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, like, could you vote anybody else as Pac-12 player of the year right now? I think so. I mean, I I, I think there's an argument to be made for a, for a couple of players, but if Oregon doesn't lose, then no. Yeah. Oh, oh all right. Who would you give votes to? Because the the people who I think are in the running, like seriously, for a Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year, Bo Nix, Zach Charbonnet, Dorian Thompson Robinson, um, Cam Penix. Rising, huh? And Michael Caleb Penix. Williams. Oh yeah, Kate Caleb Williams and Michael Penix Jr. But I think that you have to X my Michael Penix Jr. out only because right now because they have too many losses. Yeah, I mean, but it, it, you, you, I think you also have to balance like because you're. I guess you're right because they did this to Washington State for so long. The expectation was that their quarterback was going to put up cartoon yeah. numbers, and so unless they were, um, yeah. So I, I guess I understand it's more that. More system but the, oriented, it feels. I mean, even though, so I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but um, but I'm saying that 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 like you, that's a good example. That Washington State, that the numbers feel more system oriented than actual, you know, like damn, this dude's out here just, you know, lighten it, lighten it up. Yeah, but he is way out ahead in in yards, and like you said, <clears throat> it could be system, but it, the the completion percentage, the touchdowns. And I don't think anybody would have thought of Michael Penix as this type of system. No quarterback. It's going to make making Kalen DeBoer a super attractive guy to go play for because he can point to Michael Penix's time at Indiana and say like, look at, look at this athlete who is now a quarterback, uh, but Michael Penix like works the pocket. He's, he is a very good quarterback and yes, I think he he'll is. have success at the next level. Um, It's like, it's, it's like, he's got, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to compare him to your boy, but it, he has like left witch's body, but like the it's pocket, smaller. like yes, but like the broad shoulders. Um, you know who he reminds kind of me like of, and I know this up. is a weird comp. He reminds me of Joey Harrington. He has the jo- the the deep ball is the Joey Harrington deep ball. It's like kind of floats, kind of slow, like slow spiral, and just drops into a bucket. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think we've even made that comparison before on this show, but the 22 to four touchdown interception ratio, the 370 yards pass in a game, 68, you know, I, I think he, I don't think he's it, but I think he deserves to probably be in the conversation. Yeah. Um. And can I give some credit to a dude that I told everybody that this dude is phenomenal? And that is Bucky Irving, the running back. From yeah. He, and he looked good. I t- I t- bro, the dude is the second best back in the Pac-12 because it's Zach Charbonnet, number one. He's the second best back, and it ain't close. I don't know if it's not. I I he's he's awesome. He's awesome, and I think the one thing that Kenny Dillingham does really well is make sure that he's using his players to his strength. And the other thing Kenny will, uh, Dillingham does really well is gives outlets for um for if Nicks, Bo yeah. Nix has to bail on a play. Yep. Like having people just out by the sidelines. Oh that yeah, throw yeah, because they picked oh up a God. first a crucial first down just like that, throwing the ball to Bucky Irving. He he, he yeah. it looked like he was going to go scramble, then he was like, nope. Right. And he dumped it off and he and, and Bo Nix can run, but he can't run like Bucky Irving can run. So that's a guy who's you know want the you want the ball in his hands. 
Oregon looks good, dude. I I was wrong. Uh, I was wrong because I I don't know. It's weird. It was they're just better than UCLA because I, again, I'm a point to the fact that defensively there weren't too many times. And I know that I listened to some other podcasts they are like, not only is UCLA not playing anybody, their defense is garbage, but like the numbers weren't showing that, that their defense no. was garbage. They they don't have the most talented players on earth, but they've been coached. Well, they've been in position. They've made plays. I just thought they got out talented. It kind of looked, not on the scoreboard, but it kind of looked like Oregon, Georgia at the beginning of the season where it's like, well, you could point to all these things Oregon did well. And then you look at the scoreboard and you're like, geez, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of people who were trying to poo poo UCLA after this game. I was like, you don't, I you, can't. you can't, you can't poo poo the loser of Alabama, ten- Tennessee. You can't poo poo the, you know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. Like, stop it. All right. And I, I think, and voters, we, we still have four teams in the top 14. And I, I, I think that voters are respecting what the PAC 12 has been up to. Yep. I totally agree with that. Um, now on to the next game, we had Oregon state playing against Colorado and it was 42 to nine and Oregon state is bowl eligible at six and two. Yes, uh, five teams are bowl eligible in the Pac-12 with Utah having the ability to get there if they beat Washington State this week, I think. Who would have thought, you know, eight weeks in, six bowl eligible teams potentially. Um, That's huge. But I had like a note that I made that because we had some people criticize us saying that like we made it all about Cal's bad decision making and didn't give any credit to Colorado for their energy that they played with or their um, the change defensively in like schemes that might've interrupted some of the stuff that Cal was trying to do. And I was like, you know what? That is fair. And I'm going to make a note to bring that up on this week's podcast. And then Colorado went out and Colorado harder than they've ever Colorado. And now I don't really want to say anything. <laughs> so now you don't know what to say. Right. Because if that energy was really there, then, then, at any point in time, this game would have looked competitive and it just did not. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, we, we did talk on the phone though. Do you want to let people know Jack Coletto's nickname? Oh my gosh. I forgot his nick, nick, nickname. Um, cause he, he's a linebacker quarterback, goal line, fullback, running back, tight end. Oh my God! I, I forgot what what was it? Miles Pepperjack. Oh yes, Miles Pepperjack. <laughs> because it's like Miles Jack, where he was doing everything, but he's not my. He, he's Pepperjack. Yeah. But the whitest of cheese is still spicy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's it's still spicy, but it's super white. <laughs> Miles yes. Pepperjack, love it. Jack Coletto, aka Miles Pepperjack. Um, is it is there anything that you saw in this game that made you think like? Uh, that Oregon state's not going to make the switch back at quarterback. Cause that's my, that's my question. Now you have uh, your backup. I'm not, is I'm, not, I'm not switching back to chance for interception against UCLA and Nolan. I'm just, I'm just not. And because go, go, go Branson is playing well enough at this point in time that it feels, it would feel like chance. You don't look at, Chance Nolan, and you're like, oh my god, he's so much better than 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 Goldbranson. So, you, I think I think the upside is there, but like, Goldbranson has a hundred pass attempts this year and only three picks. Yeah, Chance Nolan had a hundred picks in three pass attempts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, like, Chance, Chance Nolan's talent is better, right? Yeah, but it's clear that. I mean, they're just winning. So what do you, so how do you switch back? Right. They're three, you know, you He's can switch five, back five now, touchdowns now, and an interception. They now, quit getting him sacked. Yeah. After that Stanford game, he's only been hit twice. Um, so that's the point is that if I'm not switching back, 
but I'm not committing to him being my, my, my guy though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Like, I do like, wonder like, what like he's, the hell he's, is going he's on with in Gibia. until you hear me? Yeah. Like, I'd be like, Chance, look, you're you're technically still my starting quarterback, but we're just gonna ride this for right for for right now. First time he has two picks in a half, and we're in a dogfight. You're back in there, buddy. I'm letting you know. <laughs> and, That's yeah, how I'm handling I just, that situation. I don't know if they'll let him throw enough to. Uh, to even get to that point, but holy cow, are they running the ball well? Yeah, outside they of ran Jack Coletto, two hundred and seventy six- yards versus Colorado. Not that that is like a surprise. Well, for, Cal, for Cal, Cal. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, and it's uh, man, it. Uh, they have four guys that can do damage, uh, in the running game because Jack Coletto's goal line presence he's got six touchdowns but between their other three running backs we're talking about over five yards of carry on average um none of them are burners breaking huge runs and they've got 11 touchdowns combined too they're just this is turning out to be the most oregon state of oregon state seasons and um it's cool to see it's it's really cool to see i i do wonder uh sitting at six and two if they have what it takes to um go into that final game of the season nine and two, because that would be the best way for Oregon to prove that they're deserving of a, um, of a spot in the college football playoff would be to have, you know, a Washington, Oregon state PAC 12 championship run of three games, um, on the back end. I think that oh, would dude, do some if Oregon state can run the table until they get to Oregon, Boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, that would that would set Oregon up in such a good spot. Yeah, for because because at that point in time they would for sure be a top fifteen team. You know what I mean? Yeah. At nine, and I mean they at nine they do two. have to play at Washington in two weeks, but they get two weeks to prepare. And yeah. Washington's defense is garbage. So. Yeah, and the Cal and the Arizona State game are both manageable. Very. <laughs> yeah. The Cal game they're probably winning. Um, and the Arizona state game, like the only thing going against Oregon state right now is that it's in Tempe, but they are the far superior team at this point. Yeah. So what, listen, big kudos to Jonathan Smith, everything that he's doing there. The fact that he's doing this without a top tier quarterback, he's like a witch, bro. Like, like it, it makes you believe that if you gave him Colorado, that they would be better. Yeah. Not, not Colorado would be better than Oregon State, but they would be better than one win right now. I tell you that much. Um, right. And on Colorado's end, they still stink. I mean, there's. I mean, there's. They got a couple of good players. They got a couple of good players, but I don't. I don't know what to. At this point, well, I really don't know what to say. Listen, they are a farm system for the rest of the Pac-12 right now. Because, That's what I'm worried about. Because all their good players. Like Christian Gonzalez, who's at Oregon right right now, they're gonna be like, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oregon has a, has a hole there. UCLA has a hole there. Arizona, huh? They're actually winning games. Let me go play for Arizona instead. They are gonna be a farm team yeah. for the rest of the Pac-12. And I think that they're also probably gonna have to rely on guys that played in other areas of the country uh, to come out and and fill the gap for them while some of their good players leave. So like they have Josh Chandler Samito, who is uh, Elvis Doomerville body out there and he's got 10 tackles for a loss. He's good. He's really good, but he's a West Virginia transfer, I believe. And so, you know, I think that's going to be, he he already transferred. I think he did. And I think that's uh, why he's a senior. He's a, he's a senior anyway. So I think that's what they're going to kind of have to do to to fill out their roster, and and I know that um, ASU has kind of taken that. Uh, they've had to because of the investigation. Colorado's going to have to do it just because it, the, the, you know, anytime I'm worried about them right now about Montana Lamonius Craig turning his one good game into a, a you know something to send out to to one of the other Pac-12 teams that needs assistance at receiver, um, and I'd be worried about that if I was Colorado. Um, 
one of might be one of the motivations that if you know the Big Twelve does come knocking, that Colorado would say, "Man, we got to get the hell out of you know people wanting to leave Boulder for for L.A. or for Tempe or for Seattle yep. uh, or for Eugene just to just to um, you know get some more uh, high profile playing time and playmaking ability." Yep. I don't know. All right. Uh, Arizona State, Stanford. Lord have mercy. Pass. I, I, I could. Uh, to, to be honest, I couldn't finish this game. I couldn't. I would it, prefer. What's the next game? We can we just move on if you want to. <laughs> I have I have things to say, but they're not nice things. No, no, go on, go go on, bro. Because there are so many people that are in love with Tanner McKee. I don't get it. I have to be. Honest, well, I, that's. I do okay. not get the the fawning over Tanner McKee. <clears throat> he's tall uh, yes he throws I thought he good, looked good his his arm action is slow he can't move i mean like he is standard issue pocket quarterback that adds no value to an nfl team like 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 he's i mean it, it makes it so tough because he's not a threat with his with his legs, it gives the defense so many more opportunities for defenses that they can call. It, it, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how the kid's not a bum. He's not because he can throw the football. But like he's a ten pin guy. You you got to knock all the obstacles down around him. Like you you have to keep him clean. You have to, like it like he can't make anything special happen. Hmm, I guess I don't know because of the system that they're kind of running. I, I think it, it, I think that that makes him look worse than he is. And he still looks fine. Exactly. Fine. He looks fine. Here's the difference. So this year they're running the slow mesh, right? He, has 40 carries and the way obviously college football works is they take your rushing stats out of your sacks and out of your TFLs. He in the slow mesh, 40 carries for negative 67 yards. Okay. Before they instituted the slow mesh, 60 carries for eight yards. Do you see the difference? He can't run. (laughs) <laughs> it is that no 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 no, no. That, that the slow mesh is that it allows you to get sacked more if you're <laughs> right yes right but like he's not they they did run him against ucla last year like that's the only time they've really put him out on the run and he he looked functional but he is six foot six he you, looks like he has you know. cement shoes on bro like like he runs like he had like like he wears double Don Joys on yeah, each leg. I'm, I don't know. I he did exactly what I thought he would do in this game, which is, you know, Arizona State puts everything in front of them, which makes life inside the 30 pretty hellish. Um, I don't know why Stanford doesn't take advantage of the fact that every single one of their receivers is also Tanner McKee's size. Uh that has not that has not made a lot of sense to me. But Stanford moved the ball at will in this game, and then they get to like the 30-yard line, and the way the ASU's defense is structured is that they really make it tough on you. And it's going to be like that for everybody that plays ASU. There's just, uh, you know, that's just the way they do things. Um, But they moved the ball well, and when he had time, he made all his throws. Uh, Jordan Clark's interception of him was a feat of athleticism on his part. I think he looks fine. You know, John Wilner says he's going to be a top 50 pick. Not a possibly chance. not possibly a, top 40. Not a chance. Um, I think that he's I think he's more like a fourth, fifth round guy. Yes. And I think he's going to because he's going to go to the combine and he's going to be throwing a T-shirt and shorts and he's going to look like Josh See, Allen. Wil- Wilner is thinking that that's what happened with Davis Mills. Right. So that is what will happen with Tanner McKee because they're kind of the same guy. Nope. The difference is, is that Davis Mills had didn't play very much. Yeah. And so there was still some intrigue there. Tanner McKee has a lot more film on him and people see what Davis Mills did. They're like, 
I, I don't I don't want that. D- despite how good he can throw the foot football, I think that Tanner McKee will be in the NFL for a bit. Yeah. I just don't think he's a starter in the NFL. Like I, think I don't he think he could be like a camp. you know a longer backup like a Josh McCown or something like that. But it but that's a long backup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm that's saying a, that, that's a two decade that, bit. That, that that that's like the. But it's even hard for those guys to find a f- find a job where like guys like PJ Walker are taking their spots. Yes. I got to see him live this weekend yep. too. Shout out to the Houston Roughnecks legend. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I David Shaw is probably the only coach in college football that could kick five field goals, not score a touchdown and sleep like a baby. And be like, yeah, hey, 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 we did in it. front of in we front got of the, the 18 people that we showed got the up. job done today. And I don't think it's the money. I don't think it's the money. I, I think I think he has that just NFL mindset of like, ah, we won. We won the game. Move on. You know, 24 hour rule. We'll, we'll address it later. But I don't think he I don't think he was upset in the slightest that they no. That they no, he should be happy for every anything. win that they get right now. They are right? three and four. They are three yeah. and four, and they're like, listen, our goal, we we, we can still make a bowl game. They play it, UCLA. Now, now, mind you, they've scored 31 points in the last two weeks and have two wins. <laughs> How many touchdowns? <laughs> uh, they scored against Notre Dame. How many did they score? Twice, One, right? Yeah. Uh, Philkins, no, no, once only, only Philkins scored, and then so they scored and they one came. touchdown in two weeks, and they, yeah, uh, this is like ASU, some Baltimore Ravens, <laughs> two thousand yeah. Ravens. You ever want to like? You ever get? You ever want to? And maybe it was earlier in the podcast when we were talking about Illinois defense. But do you ever just want to shake somebody? Yes, <laughs> that's how I feel about Arizona State. So now. <laughs> I, I so can't. Arizona State was four for thirteen on third down. That's not Emory, good enough. Emory again. Jones special. Yeah. Um, eight penalties, seventy-five yards. They ran Ten the ball a lot. Plays. Yeah. Ten negative plays. They don't do anything from the five to fifteen yards down the field. They're either running the ball or throwing a home run ball. They are putrid sean aguano has taken away play calling duties from glenn thomas um your boy's old oc uh, out at unlv um i don't know how he got this from well i do zach hill got had to resign right before the season started um but so glenn thomas is out the quarterback competition is now opened up um process this bit of information george trent borgay has played two and a half quarters okay Let's say they give him the start against Colorado. And he duplicates what he did in two and a half quarters against Colorado, one of the worst teams in all of college football in the last five years. Yeah. So he just has his 250 yards, three touchdowns. That will mean that in six and a half quarters, Trenton Borgay has more touchdown passes than Emory Jones in six games. Damn. Right. That's that is the level of quarterback production that ASU is getting out of Emory oh, Jones so they're right like now. Zach, Zach Wilson with the Jets right now. Who's throwing one touchdown past this entire season. Yeah, except without the winning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's it's very frustrating, and I, I cannot say enough negative things about the way this ASU season has gone. But NCAA's back in. They're back interviewing people. There was a rumor that Ray Anderson was going to get dropped this week, and Michael Crow came out and said, no, he's our guy. So we got the vote of confidence going for us, um, but it's all it's all coming to a head. And Sean Aguano's one opportunity after what I thought was costing himself the job uh, by not making a quarterback switch, his one opportunity is to um, is to call the plays himself. And and beyond that, I want to say shout out to the Pac-12 refs because they almost had like an all time screw up in this game. Uh Emory Jones after so the ASU needed to get in field goal range they did then they had like a seven step drop 10 yard sack which was like the most idiotic play calling I've ever seen in my life then they throw a bomb to Elijah Badger on the sideline who scores should have been the game winning touchdown his toe was out yeah 
ASU ran to the line to like dive over with three seconds left for the game winning touchdown with Emory Jones, but they triggered a review and Stanford gets the win. And uh, the Pac 12 almost, almost took a win away from Stanford and got very lucky to have not. Um, Cause if ASU had snapped the ball, then, then Emory Jones probably gets the one inch over the line of scrimmage scores because they blew the call twice. Elijah yeah. Badger was out of bounds and he scored. So they blew the call twice, put it on the uh, inside the one. And, and if that review is not triggered, then Stanford loses that game. And who knows what David Shaw would have said, bro. Yep. All right. The last game up Washington Cal Washington, 28 Cal 21. If I tell you these stats, okay, tell me yeah. no, no, tell me what you think that the score was. Washington had 28 first downs to Cal's 28. I'm sorry, to Cal's 18. Third downs, 10 for 17 for Washington, 6 for 15 for Cal. Fourth down efficiency, 0 for 1 for Washington, 2 for 3 for Cal. Total yards, 476 to 306. Yeah. And no turnovers for either team. What what would you tell me? Blowout. Yep. And nothing about this was a blowout at all. Actually, Cal Not had, really. Yeah, Cal had the opportunity to win this game. They just don't have enough offense to punch their way out of a paper bag. Yeah. You know how like sometimes Navy SEALs go around like speaking to school kids about like toughness and overcoming adversity? Yeah. We got to get Jack Plummer on that speaker circuit, man. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, he He's is getting alive. his ass kicked, bro. I mean, th- their offensive line is non-existent. It, their, their, their offensive line is about as good as, you know, those uh, like when in, in high schools, when they run through the banners at the beginning of the game, that's their offensive line. It's the banner. Bro, I think you called me during this game and you were like, their right tackle is going to get Jack Plummer murdered. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he was. And granted, Washington does have a good pass rush, but Cal's there. Like, he's been getting the, the shit kicked out of him all season, bro. There's no other way to say it. I don't even know how he, you play quarterback under these con- conditions. Dude, he he has to require an Epsom salt bath, a Norma Tech, a. a everything just to put him back together, put the, um, put Humpty Dumpty back yeah. together every week. And it's fun. It's because maybe I think there's probably some people that want to see Kai Milliner, uh, because he's got, he, that ain't he's, help. Uh, no, I don't think it is. He's like, he's lighter on his feet and he can move around really well. Um, but I, I don't, I look at Jack Plummer and I'm like, what, tell me what he's doing wrong. Tell me what Jack Plummer specifically is doing wrong. He he he's a little bit on the slow run. He could run. He's big, run better than Tanner McKee. He got a big he got a big wind up. He's got an excellent excellent arm. But like what what specifically is what problems is Jack Plummer causing for your offense? I don't necessarily um I don't see it and I get that Washington's defense is junk and that might have, you know, kept Cal in this game, but also like you got you always throw out the rule book when it comes to Cal uh, and Washington, they play some of the stranger games that we've ever had. I tell you what was bizarre in this game is to come home after going to two games in South Carolina, pull into my driveway. I'm all sunburned, dehydrated, sit down on the couch, turn the <laughs> TV on, and I'm staring at my own Twitter account on ESPN. What did you catch that? No, they did. They did a segment on how Jack Plummer and Jake Plummer aren't related, and they used my tweet about it to illustrate like when the mistake was made. So I'm sitting there watching ESPN staring at my own like Twitter avatar of a, of a grizzly bear and a cowboy hat. Wow. Like, what in the hell is going on right now? <laughs> it was a trip. I thought I'd like fallen asleep on the drive home and, and, and crashed and was having some type of fever dream or something, but nope, nope. That was uh, I I didn't think that that was the way I'd end up on ESPN. Uh, but that was fun. All right, so Michael Penix Jr. assaulting the record book still, 374 <laughs> yards passing. I mean, Mike Mike Leach would love the way this offense is being being run. He, they they ran for 102 yards, which which they'd be like, hell yeah, 100 yards rushing in a total game, hell yeah. Um, 
And so here's my question for you, because we almost got into it a little bit earlier. Is Michael Penix Jr. for real, or is this an Anthony Gordon year? No disrespect to Anthony Gordon. Anthony Gordon. You think so? Yeah. Like, like I think he's good, but I, I don't. <laughs> Anthony Gordon threw for 5,600 yards and 48 touchdowns in his one season as a starter. And I don't know if he ever, like. Michael Penix Jr. is already at 3,000 yards, bro. And they got, five, what, four games left. So that's another, so another 400 yards a game. That's, yeah, so he's going to end up at 4,500 yards passing. And, but only 30 touchdowns, though. <clears throat> Do you think Michael Penix Jr. will ever make an active NFL roster? Because Gordon was on practice squads for the Seahawks, Chiefs, and Broncos. Uh, if he's in the right system and the right guy get gets hurt, yeah. Okay. Like he'll he'll be a practice squad guy. Might get elevated. Like if he can hold on for long enough in the league to like get a couple of years, like get two years of practice time, then yes. You know what I mean? Like, but right now is he an NFL quarterback? No. Okay. I don't have an opinion. I'm just I I, I was curious what you thought. Yeah. But at because I, I need at, like multiple years of Kalen DeBoer data to find on. out if he's at another the Mike at Gooch. the same time while while Washington fans will a hundred percent stamp their feet at that I'm not even a hundred percent sure that like about Bo Nix in the NFL yet <laughs> you know, Bo Nix could be having an Anthony Gordon year. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because he's making a lot of passes, but behind the line of scrimmage, guys are making plays. But when he's given the opportunity to make plays downfield, like he's done well at that at that as well. So I'm not I'm like my like I have so much Bo Nix history that it takes more to unwrite it, if that makes sense. Like he's obviously playing extremely well. And if I'm Oregon, because he has another year of eligibility, I'm like, how much NIL money is it going to take for you to come back? Because I, <laughs> yeah, you know what's crazy to me is and Bo Nix. That means that your boy would be getting in the portal, and Bo I Nix. don't think that Oregon fans would care at that point if Bo Nix came back and you have Dante Moore coming in. I don't think that. Yeah, <laughs> Bo Nix has a legitimate shot at ten thousand yards passing, fifteen hundred yards rushing in his career. Yeah, I don't. I honestly, I don't even know if that's been done before. Yeah, I mean that's like some. What's the uh, kid? The uh, the kid that was at Hawaii. Uh, Timmy Chang. Yes. Are you talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, but I'm talking I, about I but, but, but just the passing numbers. Yes. Yes. So he, but he does have the he does have the opportunity. What's crazy is he has the opportunity to hit ten thousand yards passing without ever going over three thousand yards in a season. Uh, he'll go over 3000 this year. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. But uh, that would be 10,000 yards passing 1500 yards rushing would be, I, I just wonder if anybody's ever done that. Well, because n nobody really starts that long. Like, like if they're that good, they yeah. usually end up in, the, in the NFL already. All right. Um, let's get to our, uh, pack 12 power rankings. Now, this has been a fluid thing. It we we have been more in lockstep this year, I think, than we ever have. Now, where are now? Who are your teams that are in the Pac-12 uh, from uh, twelve to six? Well, uh, I would know if you told me. We <laughs> I didn't know we were doing oh, the Pac-12. We do Pac-12 power, power, power rankings every. All right, so we no, we, we don't. We've done it twice all year. Two total times this year we've done it. Dude, it's on the Kyra. Look at the bottom. Right, but we do show prep and you didn't bring it up. Oh. Okay. It's fine. Colorado's at the bottom. So <laughs> there, that's my 12. Uh, I don't know. Give me yours. I'll tell you if I disagree with any of them. All right. I am going to go. And I know that this is going to sound weird, but I'm going Colorado 12. Stanford 11, 
Cal 10, Arizona State 9, Washington State 8, Arizona 7, Washington 6, Oregon State, no, I'm sorry, USC number 5, Oregon State number 4, and I know that USC beat Oregon State. I, I you do. got like four of those already. Um, and you have then, Arizona over Cal, and you have Stanford or ASU over Stanford. Utah three, UCLA two, Oregon one. I agree with your top three. I would switch four and five. Okay. Uh, I I don't think I could put Arizona over Cal. Um. And I have a hard time putting ASU over Cal lost to Colorado. Cal lost to Colorado. That automatically like erases that. That makes what you did against Arizona an accident where you scored 49 points. How? How sway? I guess my problem is using the word power to describe the teams that are at the bottom four of this conference. (laughs) We should just rank a top eight and then we don't have to justify anything. But, um, I, but I, yeah, I don't know. It, Arizona can't play defense. Arizona State can't play offense. Football. <laughs> Football. Football. Oh my god, dude. But yeah, I don't know. You had you had so many uh that you completely ignored head to head throughout that entire thing. So um body of I work will say that, matters even like like if the body of work is pretty similar, then head to head matters a lot. But like well, ASU's body of work is they beat Northern Arizona and Washington while Stanford's body of work is they beat ASU and they beat Notre Dame on the road. Stanford and they have one more win. Stanford's terrible. Like that. That's all I know. Then you should be able to beat them. Yeah. I I mean, they, they, they have three wins. They have three wins, which is one more than ASU and they beat ASU. (sighs) Okay. Okay, you you uh, have convinced. I've argued. I've argued ASU into the eleventh hole. Cool, yes. awesome. I've devalued my degree. Correct. Yes. So Colorado show. twelve, Arizona State eleven, Stanford ten, then Cal, Washington State, Arizona, Washington, uh, USC, Oregon State, Utah, UCLA, Oregon. So you know what you just did with that adjustment? What? You created a toilet bowl. What do you mean? ASU plays Colorado this week. Yes. Yes. So now we have, thanks to you, we have a true toilet bowl. Oh my God, dude. If Arizona State loses that game, dude. Oh I won't be here next week. <laughs> the worst thing that could possibly happen for both of those schools is to lose that game. I no, 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 I'm sorry. The, boast, the worst thing that can happen to both of those schools is Colorado winning. It'd be the worst thing for Colorado too. <laughs> like they'd hire the OC permanent. Yes. Yes. They'd be like, look, he's, he's winning games. Like, like let's hire him and it'll be cheap. No, oh, dude. <laughs> I, again, I, you will have to have a different co-host. I would, I will be seven weeks of sitting Shiva or whatever. <laughs> All right, uh, let's quickly get through the games this week and make our picks. Um, uh, I, I won't even ask what the uh, score is because I know I'm demolishing you, brother. We're close in this. It's it's like you're two games ahead of me. In the other thing we do, which we didn't even do this last week, thank God for the break. Um, I'm I'm like 10 to 15 games behind you. <laughs> And we only pick five games a week. <laughs> All right. First game, Thursday night, Utah, Washington State. Utah goes to the Palouse, takes their number 14 ranking up to uh, to the, the, the corner of the earth. One of the coldest places is going to be 46 degrees, but Utah doesn't care. It's the same temperature there. Um, they're just not playing at altitude like that. What's the line on this game? This is. Would you say that this is a Tavion is due game? It seems like they've been going away from Tavion Thomas as much. Yeah. Well, it's Utah minus seven. 
Yep. Um, Washington State. They, they haven't have, been able to score lately. Back to back, two touchdown losses on the road. Yeah. So it's going to be different. I think that they're at home. They had two weeks to prepare. Uh, they're not fraudulent on the defensive side of the ball. No. Uh, if they do, well, I mean, you, Clark Phillips is going to have to, because right now I think we're we're you know it's too e, uh, too low potu. I butchered that, and Clark Phillips probably um, in the running for Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Ooh, Year. No, hold up, or the D lineman from. Um... Uh, from USC, uh, Tui. that, yeah, that's whose name I ruined. Oh, okay. that's what I was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, why... you, I did. I did such a bad job that you didn't even recognize. <laughs> Lord, I Tui, was like, Tua below two. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah. I, I was like, I was like, is he talking about somebody on Washington State's team that I don't dang. recognize right no. now? They're going to give, they're going to give Clark Phillips a bunch of chances to make, uh, plays in this game. Uh, it'll be interesting if they run the ball. Um, I, I think you, I think Utah has got a big advantage here Yeah. outside of it being, um, at Washington state. I, I like Utah by 10. I, I like them by, yeah, I like them by at least 10 as well. I think this is going to be a hunting in the zoo type of game <laughs> that, that it's eventually just going to snowball. Like Washington state's going to put up a fight and then it's just going to get ugly. It's going to be one of those. You just can't, you can't be one dimensional against, uh, Utah. You used to be able to with yep. with, with Mike Leach before Wash or before, before Utah had established themselves, and they kind of built their secondary around this idea that Washington State would kick their ass every year, right? Um, I don't think you can be one dimensional against Utah anymore. No. So, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Um, we have in order of kickoff time, <laughs> we have Oregon at Cal on Saturday. Yeah. That game's at Berkeley. Weather's clear. Oregon's favored by 17 points, and they have demolished. They are what is what is Oregon? Six and one right now. They are five and two against the spread. Because they've been favored in every single game except the Georgia game. And the only game that they didn't cover was against Washington State. Everybody else, no matter how many points, it didn't matter. Who's on this FS1 crew? Oh, uh, Brando. Okay. Okay. Oh, my God. And he had a love fest for Washington State that day when Oregon played against him. Mm-hmm. 17-point spread. Yep. 58-point uh, over-under. And Vegas, like, basically what Vegas is indicating is that, like, every bit of the money has been on Oregon to cover. Yes. So what would you so who were I'm taking Oregon and the and the points. Well, I'm taking Oregon g- giving 17 points. Yeah. Uh I I, I just like don't see Cal be, being able to score enough points. Yeah, and I think Oregon's going to give them opportunities and I don't know if they take them. That cuz that that that's just it. This isn't the best Oregon defense in the world. And Jack Plummer's got a good arm, and Jaden Ott is a good running back. So if uh, they can run block, so if a little uh, bit. they hold Cal to like ten points, are you then going to give the defensive credit? Yeah. Okay. Cool. What I, at, at, again, at, at what at what amount of points will you stop giving them credit? Twenty four. Okay. Oh God. Oh God. If Cal, if Cal scores twenty four points. I will come on here and criticize it. I will be like, this this defense needs to get their shit together. I'm not dumping on uh on Oregon's defense because I think UCLA really is that good. And like you pointed out, they made they made plays, right? Yeah. Uh but they they did not stop UCLA. They did enough. Mike D'Antoni's philosophy, you know, the team with the most points had the best defense. Um they're a top three defense in the Pac-12. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it, it, this shouldn't even be a contest. 17, um, you've had no problem taking big spreads for Oregon No, uh, this year. You've covered most of them. Are you taking this? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. I think Cal scores 13 points, 16 max. It's hard to imagine Oregon not dropping 40. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. Yep. Which means that even if Cal got 24, you're still on the cusp of covering. Correct. And Cal isn't, even if you, I, if you, even if you went out there with eight players, I don't think Cal <laughs> could, could score enough points. Guy, I just don't think that's the way their offense is built. Yeah. Yeah. So, and now yeah. if, uh, Justin Wilcox, Peter Sermon, and their officer coordinator, who was my officer coordinator in Jacksonville, uh, hear this, they're gonna hate me more, but whatever. Well, and that so that's that that does add the other interesting wrinkle to this game. Like you you turned down the Oregon job because you didn't like the conditions that were given to you, and then they turn around and run the score up on you, then you're gonna look ridiculous, you know. And to have a three game losing streak after also and to lose your home field advantage that you had going into the Washington game. You and know. you lost to Colorado. Yes. <laughs> and we have to keep pointing that out. Is, is there any chance here for, is there something Cal could do to expose a weakness on, on Oregon's end? No, 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 there's no, no way to lose this game. This feels like Alabama, Alabama versus like, not, actually, I can't even say that one because that one's a rivalry game. I'll go like, oh, this feels like Alabama versus Missouri. Yeah. Like the best they could do is make it interesting through three quarters. Correct. <laughs> Correct. All right. Um, next game up. USC at Arizona. What's the line on this game? I find this you. over. I I, th- I think this over under is interesting. Is it m- less than you had anticipated? No, it's more because the over under in the Oregon Cal game is fifty eight. So that says that they do not even expect Cal to score very many points, right? And this is almost twenty points higher. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't like. Uh, so USC is favored by fifteen and a half. Um, the most money of of anyone betting on any favorite this week is on USC's end. Um, but then again, there's just going to be a lot more USC betters than there is for Arizona. So I don't think that should tell you anything. It just because it's money doesn't mean it's smart money, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, USC's defense is not good. Uh, we waited Correct. for it to get exposed, and it and it did. I think they probably still feel like they should be undefeated, and there's an argument for that. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they 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 did what they needed to defensively. Uh, so we we have pointed out that USC's defense is very bad. They're giving up 382 yards a game. Well, if USC's defense is really bad, what about giving up 80 more yards than that? Because that's where Arizona's at, bro. Um, there, I think their we're, this is going to be a fun ESPN right highlight. Now. Yes. Yes, this is going to have big ass plays. <laughs> yes, and you're going to have this is Jaden Delora's opportunity. Now, yeah. where we talked about, there's no way that Cal can beat Oregon. There is a way a- Arizona can beat USC, and Turn USC up. is is injured right now too. I think Gentry's out. Yeah, I yeah, I think he's. I think I don't expect him to play. Um, he got pretty beat up, but it, unless you force turnovers, there's no, cause Arizona's going to turn the ball over and USC really doesn't. So it, that, that to me is the only way oh, stopping yeah, a bucket, right? Yep. Um, here's, here's the thing I'm most interested in because we've anointed Caleb Williams mm-hmm. and I, I feel like deservedly. And I feel like you've given him a ton of praise. Um, and we've said what we had to say about Jaden Delora, which is if you're not ready for him, he will kill you. If you are, he's going to embarrass himself. Um, so Jaden Delora stacked up against Caleb Williams, I think is going to be a fun comparison to show you of a, what they actually have uh, it, running back. It's no contest. Um, you know, you has guys, a better player. Yeah. yeah. But at receiver at number one receiver, I think this is the, this is the thing. Uh, Jordan Addison is fresh off winning the Blitnikoff. Right. And I think he was helped by Drake London going down obviously, yeah. but um, 
Jordan Anderson, fresh off winning the Bolitnikov, up against UTEP transfer Jacob Cowan, who at this point in the season has 14 more catches, has 150 more yards receiving, and they both have the same number of touchdowns. If Jacob Cowan looks better than Jordan Addison, he's going to make himself a ton of money. Hey. Because j- Addison's a first-round pick. Yes. Now, now to go back to the Caleb Williams thing, right? Yeah. Caleb Williams has got a lot of praise, and he deserves it. But he also deserves a little bit of criticism, too, because for sure there are times where he holds on to the ball too long and yes. he's not clearly not seeing the field as clearly as he he needs to be. But there's a difference between holding the, onto the ball too long because, you know, you can get away with it and holding onto the ball too long and getting yourself destroyed like Emory Jones does. Yes, that they the, both do the same thing, but one of them can get away with it. And eventually that could get him in trouble but so far name one yeah, person you, when, when, name one defender in college football i there's maybe like eight guys in the nfl that i could name where i'd be like all right if they get him one maybe micah parsons okay like if they get him in his sights one-on-one they'll chase him down okay here's the thing that usc so utah's defense is not as good th- this year as, th- as they have been okay they beat usc 43 42 now, Oregon State, who I think may have the best defense in the Pac-12 right now. I mean, it's possible. Like, like they're, they're really good in the secondary. They are really good in the secondary. So, they make it tough on, on, on teams. Now, Oregon State is second in the conference in total defense, but they're really tied for first because it's, a, it's percentage points. <laughs> Utah is giving up 350 yards a game. Oregon State's giving up 350 yards a game. I mean, we're we're talking decimal points. And scoring defense, they're both averaging uh, Utah giving up 22 points a game. Oregon State giving up 22 points a game. And USC giving up 22 points a game. So, and then Arizona is giving up 36 points a game. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, sorry. There, there's not really a... I mean, the only way is... Like, if they can find a way to, like, get some, like, drop ball turnovers, because Caleb Williams doesn't really throw you the football. So, if they can get a fumble, like, they would need a couple, yeah. like, two turnovers to, to like, stay in this game to win, like, a 43-42 game. I would like to see them because they, they, they didn't really give the ball to Travis Dye that much against Utah. But the week before against Washington State, he had, he touched the ball 28 times, right? Yeah. I would like to see them do that again and just give Caleb Williams uh, a break, allow him to make the plays as they come to him and not have to, like, run all over the field. This is, like, this is the one – I hope I'm not putting any bad juju out in the world, but, like, this is the type of game where you, like, Caleb Williams doesn't have to do that much but could go out and try to do too much, get himself hurt or something like that. And I don't want to see that. You you should try to be in a position where Miller Moss has taken reps in the third quarter. Yes. Cor- in this correct. game. Because correct. you can run Arizona off the field if you want to, which limits the amount of time that Jaden Delora see, has the ball in his and, hands. And here's the thing about Arizona, though. I think that Arizona may have learned a lot from that Oregon game. Now, it didn't help them against Washington because they went on the road, but I think that they've played two tougher teams and you're they're sitting there like, hold up. There are some things that we have to do better. And I think as a play caller that they're going to do better as pl- like play calling and not like, you, you, you know, cause that, that fumble against Oregon on that fly sweep thingy that the, the game was over right there. Yeah. So I think that they understand the urgency surrounding that. So that's the only thing, but they have a brutal end to the schedule, bro. They got USC, Utah, then UCLA. Oh, my God, dude. They could lose five games in a row. They're probably yeah, going to well, lose five games in a, in a row and then get a chance to beat Washington State and Arizona State, which are two winnable games, which which makes that Cal game just – like that Cal brutal. game is going to be the difference between them going to a ball game. Yeah. Not. And in three, three of the last four games, they've given up seven touchdowns. They just – they don't have the uh, ability to get pressure on team. They got some decent athletes oh, dude. Um, in it their secondary, but they can't flocking, get pressure on anybody. Flocking to them in the transfer portal. 
They're going to be like, ooh, they're getting better. I can play right now. They play against good teams. Like, I'm in there right now. I'm going in there and, starting. And you know what's funny is, and, the, and it's not going to feel like it if you're an Arizona fan, but if they lose out, if they lose the next five games and they finish – three and nine, it's going to sting because you lost to Arizona state and it's going to sting for Jaden Delora because he lost to Washington state. But the truth of the matter is when you zoom out, you're going to look at this season and be like, what a huge success Yes, for Arizona. Yes. And that's like, people need to understand this would be like Colorado winning three games next year. Yeah. It's huge. It just doesn't feel like it in the moment they are getting better. They I don't think that they're going to lose. Well, actually, that that would mean they finish losing the season seven games in a, in a row if they lose the next five. I think they lose right. the next three, and then they can beat Washington State and beat Arizona State. If they beat, if they win both of those games this season, five will wins, be, throw a parade, throw a parade. You couldn't ask for anything more. After one win in two years, and that win was not legitimate. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Cal right. should not have gotten off the bus. They shouldn't have. The game shouldn't have been played. Mm-hmm. Or maybe had been played at, at, at a later date. It, it's a win, technically. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, they were the worst team in Power 5 over the last two years. And you're telling me they're going to come back, win five games, including a win over North Dakota State? Yep. That is that is humongous. And again, even three games is, is a success. They're playing with house money right now, so... Um, I hope they act like it. I hope the fans realize that even if they do continue to struggle, um, how much fun it is to have a team that can actually score the football uh, because they didn't have that for the last two years. Stanford at UCLA. This is going to be bad. This is 16 and a half point spread. Get... I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it too. I'll take it too. Uh, they are going to be going to Dor- Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to be like, I don't even know if he slept all week. Mm-hmm. He probably is not happy. I mean, after the game, he was like, yo, if we had just executed, we were better than Oregon. All that. Like he still wasn't even accepting the loss to after the game. Like, so he damn sure ain't accepting it now. And he said, he's, he, he's about to send people to the Capitol. <laughs> yes. Dude. I, de- I demand a recount. Yes. Yes. Stanford has no hope in this game. None. I, I agree. I agree. They're going to get absolutely crushed. Crushed. And if they don't, then all those people that were like, it's all an illusion, fire Chip Kelly, we can't take him to the Big Ten, then I'll start listening to those people. Yeah. Because I thought that they were and, Looney Tunes. And, and remember, I this. told you that UCLA's floor this year was 10 wins. Yes. That's their floor. And they are right on pace right now. Like that, that that's the only game I thought that they would lose so far was the Oregon game. I think the only other possible game that they can lose is USC. That's it. Yeah. Having watched Stanford up close, I think they they're going to put some points up. I just don't. It's crazy points, because points this, how? Again, they're going to kick like, Seven field goals? <laughs> yeah, they're going to get 21 right. points off seven field goals. Right. Uh, it's just crazy to me because this Stanford defense is outperforming their talent on the defensive side of the ball. They are. They have played 11 very good quarters in their last 12. Yes. And they're still 2-1. Two, two and one. Offensively, they have played zero good quarters and in the last and 12. And two and one um i think the universe writes itself and i think we see i think i think we <laughs> i think we might see a six at the front of ucla's final score in this game. 60 damn hey, hey it is entirely possible <laughs> yeah and the bro i like david shaw but they got they have to make some changes I had a light go out. Oh, um, <laughs> like, yeah, but what changes? But what changes? Go to the Mountain West since they play San Diego State brand of football. What changes? Like, what can they do? Like, they need an office they coordinator. Are, they need a new office coordinator. And but they already have their offensive coordinator already has the ability to focus only on scheming because they 
don't recruit in the same way. I don't know, bro. Uh, it's 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 trouble time. It, it is decision time at Stanford. You either have to. Get- I would feel I would feel bad for them if they were not. If those kids weren't leaving with Stanford degrees, like they're going to be fine. Yeah. And if David Shaw wasn't the you know a top ten highest top five highest paid coach in college football, I would have sympathy because they are getting royally screwed based on their own set of standards. Yeah. But I don't feel, I don't feel sorry for them yeah. because there's no, they've done nothing on their end to mitigate. Correct. Correct. If like they have let everything happen to them and not. <laughs> They're on like a two game winning streak and we're just like shitting all over them right now. But it, it, it they no, haven't no, looked I'm good in college football. They are letting everything happen to them. They are not happening to college football. All right, um, last game up. Arizona State at Colorado, the Toilet Bowl. A team that should be 0-7, but is 1-6 because Cal refused to run the football. Um, and Arizona State, who, is, who looks atrocious. This is how bad Colorado is. Yeah. What's the line on this game? 14, right? Yes. 13 and a half? Yes. <laughs> So it, it should be. Do you realize how 30. bad it is? How bad you are? If that's if Arizona State's favorite by 13 and a half points, what is the line going to be for Oregon, Colorado next week? 33 and a half. Yeah. It, it's that's like an Alabama line, bro, playing <laughs> Vandy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, um, so who are you taking it in this game? Because we both took UCLA. Who are you taking? I said on last week's show that there were things that Stanford could do to put Arizona State in trouble, even though Arizona State is the better team. They did those exact things. It was like watching my nightmare play out in front of me. Um, that's not a possibility in this game. It's not. There's yeah. no. There's nothing Colorado can do. You can do something to yourself against Colorado to allow them uh, in, but yeah. they're it's not it's not happening. I don't I don't know what to say. Is there a chance that ASU might not cover because they can't move the football? Like yes. possibly, but this is crazy. So you have a former high school football coach who has not been a play caller, wasn't even at the high school that he he was at, not for the last few years that he was there calling plays for the very first time you might get a five foot 11 walk-on quarterback national seven on seven champion with an offensive line that has five interior offensive linemen two of which you have to play at tackle and there's still no reason that they should lose or they should uh do anything other than blow colorado out correct like, so so is the there truth. a way because Colorado did beat Cal. So is there a way they can beat Arizona State? They got to score on defense and special teams, and it would have to be like multiple times. Um, Because they're going to give up at least tw- – I think they're going to give up, up at least tw- 28 to 34. So how are they going to get that back? Because what Arizona State could do is they could just give the ball to Zazavian Valade 40 times. And that's, that's lights out. Yeah, true. He is – a top three or four running back in in the Pac-12. He's dependable as hell. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to have to start it. him at four because Char- Charbonnet is cemented at number one in everybody's mind. I think Bucky yeah. Irving's two. Troy died. I mean, Travis died three. And then we can and go. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. But, and then, and then you have uh, Daniel and the backup running back who is like a uh, super fast. And, and if they are able to mix them up, they might not even have to throw a pass to win this game. Uh, and based on the way they did pass pro, maybe they shouldn't. Hey, um, Hey, and, and, and that's basically what air force did, did to him. So, you know, who's going to be your co-host next week when I'm wrong. Cause I, I, I will take a week off. <laughs> so I would just, I, I will, Oh my gosh! I, I will start. Coming. I wouldn't expect you to be here if if Oregon lost to Colorado. 
Dude, if Oregon loses to Colorado next next week, I, I will show up with clown masks. I will do the show in clown paint. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if I could do it, man. Especially after the state, I think I might. I think I might give up football. <laughs> Arizona State, they'll be back in ten years, bro. Don't worry. Just be Dude, just be patient. This. I hate this. I hate the NCAA. I hate I'm not a huge fan of Antonio Pierce right now. I just, ugh. you should, it, it's not just Antonio Pierce's fault. This is Herm's fault. This is Ray Anderson's fault, but even more than it's that. It's Ray's fault. Hold it's on. Ray's fault. No, no, no. I have you this know crazy did. theory. Michael Crow. He deserves even more blame <laughs> because no, he does because he allowed this to happen because of Larry Michael Scott. So, like, all of this goes back to Michael Crow continuing to bag yeah. Michael Scott. Larry, Larry Michael Scott. That then allowed him to stay with Ray Anderson. The high, the, dude, th this is like the butterfly effect for Arizona State. And they came out the worst to wear. Out of any Pac-12 team, they came out the worst to wear. I just, I'm imagining a world, first of all, I'm imagining a world in which any other AD would have hired Herm Edwards. I don't think it exists, but if they had, it would probably be a world where you gave them the resources they needed to succeed and held them accountable. Yeah. Ray Anderson took this huge risk, risked his entire reputation, and then didn't support Herm at all. Not at all. Yep. Didn't make him learn how to recruit didn't make him learn how to use social media, didn't make sure that he knew what was going on around him. I, I, I've i convinced myself, based on some of the success that ASU had, that a halfway present athletic director that wasn't busy battling his basketball coach over who may or may not have sexually harassed his wife would have actually, let's not get into it. And and And, and you know what? Let's end the show. Next week, we'll talk about some of the stuff that George Klyavkov said at Pac-12 Basketball Media Day. But right now, I want to go drink a bottle of whiskey and not think about the fact that Arizona State might be bad for the next five years because of this. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. What What are we going to do if they take away 15 scholarships or something? Bro, if they take away 15 scholarships, bro, that would be... That would be the equivalent of, I don't even know, bro. Like that would literally be the equivalent of quitting. I, I mean, like the death penalty for them. How many did they take from USC? 10? Yeah. And that torched them. I remember. <laughs> yep. Except for Lincoln, uh, not, not Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. Um, Lane, Lane Kiffin was still able to recruit a top 10 class <laughs> with 13 dudes. Yeah. Yeah. So b b before Ralph breaks down, I'm George I'm Reister. Cry. He's Ralph Amson. This is the Pac-12 Apostles.